Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi there, I'm Joletta. Thank you for joining me today. We are continuing our journey through Matthew. And recently we have been looking at a portion of Matthew where Jesus describes the end times to his disciples. And so far his parables have been a strong encouragement to get prepared, to be on guard, to be ready, because no one knows for sure when the final day will come. But in our text today, we have a shift. Jesus begins now to describe what will take place after he returns and when the time for final judgment has arrived. So let's see what our text says. We're starting at Matthew 25, uh, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And I'm just going to pause for just a second. I did a little research about sheep and goats, and fun fact, did you know that sheep feel safer and protected in a group? They have a natural instinct to flock together for survival. But goats, on the other hand, are more independent creatures. They like to wander off and do their own thing. So let's just keep that in mind as we continue reading. Uh, Picking up from verse 34. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. I'm going to pause again. In this section of scripture, Jesus describes that at the final judgment, the righteous will receive eternal life. He also praises them for their faithfulness to care for those in need. However, I want to emphasize that it's not their actions alone that earned them this inheritance. But instead, it's the loving actions that flow from a faith in Jesus. We are all sinners, but for those who have accepted Jesus as their Savior, none of their sin will be acknowledged at the final judgment because all of their sin has been forgiven. Jesus will look at them and see a reflection of his own righteousness, and the rewards will be for their faithfulness. So let's continue. At verse 41... Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. So in these final verses, Jesus describes that at the final judgment, the unrighteous will receive eternal punishment. Those in this group are not being punished simply because they neglected to act lovingly toward others. They are being punished because any good works they may have done were not reflections of a faith in Jesus. They had never accepted Jesus's death as the replacement for their own deserved death. And so they earned death at the final judgment. So what's the challenge here? First, if you haven't done so already, place your faith in Jesus. Second, help those in need out of your love for Jesus. Remember the days leading up to the return of Christ are filled with turmoil. 
There are wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, and persecution. It will be a time when life is so difficult for believers that many will turn away from the faith. So especially in hard times, find protection and safety in your flock, care for one another, and be faithful until the very end. And in due time, you will receive your inheritance. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this has been encouraging to your soul.